Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the Indianapolis Colts 2019 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. And if you're new to the channel, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Now, if all that's up all the way, let's get to the Colts draft. So with the first pick of the draft, Rocky Sin, cornerback out of Temple. When you look at his production data, he had a 41.47 solo tackle score and a 75.82 pass deflection score. Uh, doesn't hit all the areas he needs to hit in terms of solo tackle data for all pro potential, but does hit really good pass deflection marks. So this is someone who's more indicative of a long-term starter than a special, special cornerback. And when you look at athleticism traits, he had a 73.93 explosion score, a uh, 46 point, uh, I think 5.9 speed score, and an 18.04 flexibility score. So didn't test where he needs to hit in terms of high quality cornerback athleticism, but does hit at least the starter areas at the position, except for flexibility testing. There's never been a long-term starting cornerback since the 1999 NFL draft class with a flexibility score as low as Rocky Sin. But he could still become a starter. So he has good explosion traits, good enough explosion traits that he could become at least a solid nickel kind of cornerback at the next level. So that's the best sort of case scenario with him. Um, but overall, not the best overall cornerback that they could have taken here. Then, of course, you get to probably the best pick for them, uh, Ben uh, Bonagu or Bonogu uh, from uh, TCU. Uh, when you look at his uh, production data, 85.67 in terms of solo tackle data, 62.42 in terms of sack data, and 86.05 in terms of flexibility traits. Uh, doesn't hit all the all-pro thresholds, but does hit all the Pro Bowl thresholds. And not only that, great athleticism traits, 95.42 in terms of explosion, 78.82 in terms of speed, and 83.65 in terms of flexibility for his size. Great, great, great athleticism traits. Pretty much hits all the all-pro areas you're looking at. Uh, based on his at the averages, he looks more like a Pro Bowler than an All Pro player. But he's pretty much Cameron Wake. He's like a Cameron Wake clone. So I would not be surprised if he has a Cameron Wake like impact at the next level because he's very productive and very athletic. And I was very very surprised to see L.J. Collier get drafted over him just because of how much of a freak Ben Benogu is <laughs> at the position. So I'm very very excited about him obviously. Uh, and then, of course, we get to Paris Campbell, wide receiver at Ohio State. Uh, when you look at his uh, production data, 39.82 in terms of market share data. So again, market share data is about the percentage of the offense that he makes up compared to every single wide receiver since the 1969 NFL draft class. Did Paris Campbell have a lot of yards in the Ohio State offense? Yes. But he was in an offense that literally has 7,000 plus yards in it uh, in terms of overall yardage. So Paris Campbell is, is definitely uh, was productive in the raw stat sense, but in the actual percentage of the offense he made up, he was not that productive. Uh, and when you look at the all the wide receivers that have been really, really great players at the next level, five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, and long-term starter, he didn't hit anywhere near the market share scores that those players hit. So that's where Paris Campbell runs into issues. It's not the fact that he has really great raw stats, but when you actually take those stats and – adjust it for how much of the offense he made up and then you compare that to every other wide receiver drafted since 1969 his score is not that impressive it just is not and 39.82 is below average um, when you look at the averages at the position the average all pro score average pro bowl score and average starter score nowhere near those averages so again i think people need to stop thinking about raw stats when looking at wide receiver stats you need to be looking at the percentage of the offense that they made up and in paris campbell's case he didn't make up a significant percentage of that offense, that overall passing offense. He just didn't. So you have to understand that to understand why he didn't score that that great. Now he he does have good athleticism traits. You know he did have a good speed score. He had a good explosion score, uh, but everything else was just not where it needs to be for him. Uh, and then of course you get to the next pick of the draft and Bobby Okirik. Uh, from Stanford, uh, when you look at his production, 67.06 in terms of solo tackle data. Didn't hit the all-pro threshold, pro bowl threshold, but did hit above the starter threshold. But when you look at the averages, he definitely is below all the averages for all-pro, pro bowl, and starter player. And when you look at athleticism traits, good athleticism traits. 70.62 in terms of explosion, 89.85 in terms of speed, and 73.44 in terms of flexibility testing. Now, uh, pretty much hits the Pro Bowl areas that you want him to hit, but doesn't hit all the All-Pro areas. But overall, I think there's definitely a good chance that Bobby can become a long-term starting linebacker, but not someone that I could pin down as being like a special, special linebacker at the next level. 
Uh, then, of course, we get to Kari Wilson from Michigan State. You look at his production data, 80.36 in terms of solo tackle data, 28.28 in terms of interception data, and 44.88 in terms of uh, pass deflection data. Uh, doesn't hit all the all-pro thresholds or Pro Bowl thresholds at the position, uh, but definitely could become a starter. I mean, his solo tackle data is good enough to, to make him a starter. Uh, and we'd look at at least the athleticism testing that he did have. He did test well, 73.11 in terms of explosion and 89.04 in terms of speed. So I would say at the very least, Kari Wilson can become a long-term starting safety. He's just not someone that I could ever foresee becoming like a really special, special safety. Uh, and then we get to Marvell Tell, uh, uh, safety out of USC. When you look at his production data, 44.19 in terms of solo tackle data, 75.86 in terms of interception data, and 41.56 in terms of pass deflection data. Doesn't hit all the all-pro thresholds or the Pro Bowl thresholds in terms of solo tackle data and pass deflection data. I would say overall, you're looking more of a backup guy, but could become a starter just because of how well his interception data is. And as far as athleticism data, I don't have a ton on him. Uh, then, of course, you get to uh, EJ Speed out of Tarleton. And now, a lot of people are going to look at his raw stats and go, wow, he's amazing. But again, he was only about 220 plus pounds. And based on his size for his athleticism testing, he didn't test that well as an athlete. 19.08 in terms of explosion for his size, 46.50 in terms of speed for his size, and 49.36 in terms of flexibility for his size. If EJ Speed had done all that stuff at 240 pounds, he would have tested really, really well. But he was only 220 plus pounds when he went through all that testing. So EJ Speed is, is has good sort of uh, raw athleticism, but... His size for his athleticism is not as impressive as NFL athletes are. So that's the biggest issue that he's going to run into other than just being from a small school where there is, you know, there, there are some issues for small school guys to kind of break into the NFL level, which we're not going to get into on this show, but just another sort of layer of issues for him. Uh, and then, of course, we get to uh, Jerry Green uh, from Mississippi State. When you look at his uh, uh, production data, 19.35 in terms of uh, solo tackle data, 20.28 in terms of sack data, and 43.63 in terms of tackle for loss data, below average in every single athletic, in every single production trait. And athleticism-wise, he does have at least serviceable athleticism, 42.57 in terms of explosion, 79.28 in terms of speed, and uh, 55.36 in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't hit all the all-pro and pro-bowl areas, but does hit at least the starter areas. I think at the very best case, you have a really good sort of backup guy in Jerry Green based in his production and his athleticism traits. Then, of course, we get to Jackson Barton, offensive tackle out of Utah. When you look at his athleticism traits, 47.12 in terms of explosion, 59.42 in terms of speed, and 53.49 in terms of flexibility for his size. Does not hit all the all-pro areas, but does hit at least above the pro-bowl areas. But when you look at the averages, Nowhere near the all-pro average, pro-bowl average, or starter average. I would say best-case scenario, Jackson Barton could become a long-term starter as a guard, potentially. Uh, tackle would be a little bit less likely, but you could get something out of him. He's not a lost cause, but he just doesn't have, the, he doesn't injure the averages. You know, he isn't what most of the starting tackles are in terms of athleticism traits, and I think that is definitely something that is going to create some problems for him at the next level and in terms of long-term success. Then, of course, we get to Javon Patterson, center out of... Uh, Ole Miss, when you look at his uh, production data, 40, uh, not production, but athleticism, 44.08 in terms of explosion, 83.51 in terms of speed, and 74.54 in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't hit all the all-pro areas, does hit above the pro Bowl areas and starter areas, and when you look at the athleticism traits, he does hit at least close to the all-pro, the, the pro Bowl averages and the, and the uh, starter averages. His only issue is his explosion testing is not near the averages, but it's serviceable enough, and I think there's definitely a good chance he becomes a long-term starter. So he's one of the better picks that the Colts have had in terms of the later rounds at the position. So overall, how do I feel about the Indianapolis Colts draft class? I would say it's a good class. There is some depth in here that is good. I would say there's not a lot of star players, though, unfortunately. None of the players that I kind of looked at, other than Ben Bonogu, uh, he's the one guy that I think is, is just a really super, super pick. So he's a guy that I think has the potential to become like a Pro Bowl edge rusher. Very, very, like Cameron Wake-like impact is definitely a possibility here with him. Every other player here has some question marks, has some issues, but they can contribute. They can become really great depth for the roster. But uh, again, I don't see a lot of star players, but there are a couple. And because of that, I would say this is a good draft, but not the best draft it could have been uh, based on some of the picks they made in the later rounds, which just seemed like they drafted guys just to be backups and there's nothing wrong with with drafting backup players but 
I do think that you need to at least take a shot on guys that have a chance to become a starter in any round, uh, for that matter. And I think that's just the sort of biggest issue or criticism I have on this draft class is towards the end where they kind of just took guys that were more going to just become backups. And, of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification bell in case you want to be reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>